Hello, this is Steve at Universal Devices with a tutorial on variables. In this video, we will go over how to define and use variables in a program, as well as some examples on how to use them. Variables are very useful in the programming world. They allow your programs to act in a dynamic way, such that you can change the output of a program based on varying input. For example, if you want to run a task in a program a certain number of times, you could use a loop and store the iteration number in a variable. Another thing you can do with variables is store certain information that your program might need to run. There are various operators available for comparing variables and for calculating values for variables. For conditions, we have the standard comparisons of equal, not equal, less than, less than or equal, greater than, greater than or equal. And for operators, we have the standard assign, add, subtract, multiply, divide, remainder, as well as the binary operators. We have and, and or, exclusive or, and there's also the random operator that assigns a random number to a variable. For example, if you assign variable x equals random 3, x will be set to either 1, 2, or 3. Calculations are not available in conditions and are only available as actions in the then or else path of your programs. One thing to keep in mind is that many calculations require multiple steps. For example, if you wanted to set a variable to 25% of its current value, you would do the following. What we're going to do is multiply the existing value of int underscore 1 by 25. We're going to update this. And then we're also going to divide int, the current value of int, by 100 and we're going to add this to then. What this is going to do is multiply the existing value of int1 by 25 and then dividing that new value by 100 giving you a percentage. So now that I've described what variables are and what operators are available to work with them, I'm going to demonstrate how to use variables by showing you several programs that work together to increase the time of an off timer for a bathroom light. Before you can use a variable you must first define it in the admin console. To do this, click on the Programs tab and then Variables. You will notice there are two types of variables here that you can use in your programs. These two types are integer and state. An integer variable is a variable that is a 32-bit signed integer which is initialized at startup. You are able to use it to perform arithmetic operations as an action or you can perform comparison operations in the conditions of your programs. Whenever the status of a device changes, for example, a light turning on, an event is generated inside the ISY that causes it to automatically check the conditions of your programs and run them if the conditions are met. Similar to this, an event is generated whenever a variable changes its value, but only for state variables. Integer variables do not generate an event and do not cause the ISY to automatically check the conditions of your programs. For this reason, integer variables are faster. Another important note is that the variable is initialized at startup. That means that the value is set to zero if an initial value isn't set. A state variable is identical to an integer variable in every way except for changes to its value do cause an event to be sent. This is useful in that you can cause a program to run based on the value of a variable. One thing to keep in mind is that integer variables are faster than state variables. This is because an event is not sent out when they change. If you have a series of calculations that change a variable frequently, you may want to use an integer variable that in the end assigns the value to a state variable so that an event is only sent out once at the end of the calculation instead of a series of events sent out during the calculation. So let's go ahead and create a state variable. To do this, click on the state tab and then click the add button. First thing we need to do is give this variable a name. As you can see, it's basically called state underscore one right now. So we're going to go ahead and click on this. And for this example, I'm going to call this variable bathroom light count. Before we can change the init value or the value, we must first click the save button. As you can see, now that we've clicked the save button, we have the ability to specify the init value and the value. If you don't set the init value, your variable will be set to zero when the variable is initialized. 
I'm going to set the init value to zero because we'll be using this variable as a counter and we need our counter to start at zero. I'm also going to set the value to zero as well. One thing I wanted to show you is how you can quickly change the value of the init value and the value of a variable. Simply double click on the init value and you can change the value. Same thing goes for the variable value. If you wanted to keep the initial value and the value zero, all you have to do is give the variable a name and click save. The variable is automatically set to zero if nothing is specified. You can create an integer variable using the same process. The only difference is that a change in a state's variable's value will cause an event to be sent which could cause a program to run. If you want to modify a variable once it's been created, all you have to do is double click on it. Now that we've created a variable, let's see how we can use this variable in a program. Let's start by creating one of the four programs we're going to need for our bathroom light example. To do this, click on the details tab and then the new program button in the lower left hand corner. We need to give this program a name, so for this tutorial I'm simply going to call this program program one, but you can call it whatever you want. And let's go ahead and click the Save Changes button. So now that we have our program, we can now add some conditions. So under Conditions, we're going to choose Control in the drop-down list, and then we're going to select our bathroom light switch link, and we're going to say Is On, and we're going to add that to the If. The next thing we need to do is specify what the program will do if it detects that the switch link is on. In our example, we're going to increase the value of our bathroom light count variable by 1. So to do this, click on the Action button, and in the drop-down list, we're going to select our variable. As you can see, we have our bathroom light count there. And then we're going to choose plus and equal 1. Now what this is doing is taking the existing value of our bathroom light count variable and adding 1 to it. We're going to click the Add to Then button and then let's click Save Changes. The first program in our example is now finished. We now have a program that will detect each time the on button on the switch link is pressed and will increase the value of a state variable by one. The next program we need to write is very similar to the first one except for this time it will detect when a switch link is switched off and set the value of our variable to zero. Let's get started on that program. What I'm going to do to save time is copy the first program we created because the one we need to create and the one we just created are very similar. So to do that, right click on program one and then choose copy. Now we have to give this program a name, so again I'm going to call it something like program two, but you can feel free to call it whatever you want. So now as you can see we have a program that's identical to the first program. But what we need this program to do is detect when a switch link is turned off and we need to set the bathroom light count variable to zero. So to do that we're going to say if control bathroom light is switched off, click the update button, we're going to update our bathroom light count variable to zero. So we're going to choose equals, I'm going to set this to zero and click on update and then click the save changes button. So now that we are done our second program we need to write the timer program. This program will run whenever our bathroom light count variable is greater than 1 and will loop and decrease the value of our variable by 1 every 5 minutes until it reaches 0. Let's create a new program and we'll call this program Program 3. Our conditions are going to be variable bathroom light count is greater than 0. So what this is going to do is it's going to cause the program to do whatever we put in the then when the variable bathroom light count is greater than zero. Our actions are going to be wait five minutes. But you can choose whatever you want here. This value is going to be multiplied by the number stored in the count variable to calculate how long the light stays on. So we're going to add this to then. We now need to subtract one from our count variable. To do that, we need to choose variable in the drop-down list, choose our bathroom light count variable, and then we're going to choose minus and then equal. What this does is it's going to subtract 
whatever value is in the bathroom light count by one. We're going to also add this to then. This is very similar to the syntax we used in the first program except for we are subtracting one instead of adding one to the value for the variable. The third program in our example is now complete. The last program we need to create actually turns the light off when the value of the bathroom count variable reaches zero. So let's go ahead and create a new program and we'll call this program program4. Our conditions are going to be variable bathroom light count is zero. So this is going to cause the program to run when the bathroom light count is zero. Our action is simply going to be to set the bathroom light to off. And then we're going to go ahead and click the Save Changes button. So now with these four programs, we have a fully working example. To show you how these programs work, I'm going to change the value of our wait time here to five seconds in program three. That way we don't have to wait to see the results. So now our wait time is five seconds. I'm going to click Save. And now when I click our Switch Link button three times, our value on our bathroom light count variable will increase to three. One, two, three. And now, as you can see, this variable will count down. And then I'm going to go to our main here so you can see that our bathroom light will shut off. And there you go. Our bathroom light just shut off. So that's it. I hope this video tutorial has given you some helpful information to use while writing your programs. Please check back for more tutorials and thanks for watching.